Let's watch Tucker Carlson. I was going to talk about this already. We we're going to talk about CRT and uh, Tucker Carlson's like incredible POV on uh, critical race theory. Uh, he got very upset that uh, General Milley said something along the lines of like, you know, don't accuse me of being woke because I read Lenin. I read the works of Lenin and Mao. That doesn't mean I'm a gosh darn communist. Just like, I guess, reading CRT or critical race theory or things that Republicans consider to be critical race theory will not make me a f***ing woke. Ben Shabibo was very upset at it too here. Let's point out that like here was uh, General Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, just now on critical race theory talking about wokeness. Ben Shapiro says, and yet Marx and Lenin aren't on Milley's recommended reading list because the military isn't generally in the business of presenting despicable anti-American views to its members worthy of consideration. I love this take like that Marx and Lenin are uh, despicable anti-American views. I love that Karl Marx hated America when uh, he literally wrote fawning letters to none other than Abraham fucking Lincoln. Kind of a strange take from Shabibo here. Marx literally thought America was ripe for revolution. Like He was a bit of an Ameribu and loved Abraham Lincoln and sent him letters. It's kind of cool that he's like, uh, you know, He's, he's taking this like completely ahistorical approach. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Want to hear an amazing story? It has. He's gonna. He's just gonna go buck wild. Okay. Trigger warning. Tucker Carlson going buck wild. Straight the fuck up. Just wasp nationalism, baby. A little bit of white genocide rhetoric in here. I mean, this is like. I mean, let's just watch. Let's just. In 1851, a man called Samuel Cartwright came up with a fairly sophisticated scientific explanation for why so many slaves were running away from plantations in the American South. These fugitive slaves, Cartwright explained, were suffering from a medical disorder. It was called drapetomania. It was a syndrome characterized by an uncontrollable or insane impulsion to wander. So that was the problem. It wasn't they disliked being enslaved or yearned for freedom and basic humanity. No, no, no. No, the problem, according to Samuel Cartwright, was that black people as a group were inherently defective. They were drapedomaniacs. They were always running away. Please don't tell me he's going to compare this like phrenology uh, laden psychotic race uh, realist uh, race scientist to the critical race theory. Oh my fucking Lord. Oh yes, he is going to do that. Obviously, of course. 107 years later, it is embarrassing to repeat something this stupid out loud. It's so obviously insane. But here's what you should know. Drapedomania was taken very seriously at the time, and so was Samuel Cartwright. Cartwright was not a fringe character at all. He was a nationally prominent physician. He went to Penn Medical School. I have to point out the inherent irony here because I know where he's going to. What he's going to say is like, this is just the same as white rage. Categorizing whiteness as a disease is inappropriate and unfortunate. We are repeating the mistakes of the past. What is remarkable here is that in an effort to devalue, like, uh, I don't know, uh, the 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 uh, analysis of, like, white supremacist undertones in American history, he's literally describing how white supremacy could be so fucking pervasive that someone who went to medical school could be a prominent white supremacist, which is kind of something that people should learn about, Tucker. That's the point. Cartwright was a practitioner of something called scientific racism. Scientific racism is deeper than simple prejudice. It is the use of science to justify the dominance of one group over another group. So it's not really about color, though it's called racism. Instead, it's about power. The point is, scientific racism never actually went away. What? It's still with us. No one talks about drapedomania anymore. Is he saying that, like, there's race realism? happening in medical schools that like literally believe that whiteness is like a genetic condition oh my fucking god dude that's great in an effort to devalue education that revolves around teaching people systemic racism he gave a clear-cut example of how pervasive white supremacy was in american history that it literally seeped into like the medical profession and uh the dominant theory at the time was race realist and eugenicist in nature only to then turn around and be like this is exactly like teaching people systemic racism and its impact in contemporary american society that's fucking awesome dude medical professionals and law professors and military leaders and politicians and cable news hosts have identified a new disorder they claim explains everything bad it's called whiteness that's why we must abolish it as harvard magazine put it 
abolish the white race. Only then can we be happy. Okay, 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 okay. Harvard Magazine abolish the white race. I, I just like, he's just like dropping all this shit. I got to go into it and see what he's referencing here. What? Oh, Noel Ignatiev, scholar who called for abolishing whiteness, dies at age 78. He wrote a book in 1995 called How the Irish Became White. His concept was uh, he worked around race and class and is called to abolish whiteness. I don't know enough about this theory, but uh, judging by like a quick cursory glance on, on what this is, seems like he means the concept of whiteness is built around exclusion, which unironically is... Kind of what, uh, you know, uh, people like Tucker Carlson try to explain. Or I guess he's talking about, yeah, when race becomes black and white, writers confront their personal histories. In the interest of survival, Afro-Americans have always studied whiteness. There's a long tradition among them that the white race is a particular sort of social formation. Yeah, whiteness as a concept is a pure fabrication. White people have grown in size and it's become more over-encompassing. I'm white, depending on who you're talking to. I'm white in America, certainly not considered white in a place like Germany because of my Turkish background. But even then, once people recognize that I'm a Muslim, Turkish person, then all of a sudden I'm no longer white. Do you understand? Fanny Franks did not consider Italians to be white. He did not even consider Germans to be white. He considered them to be swarthy. The Irish were, were not considered white. The Polish were not considered white. Slavs were uh, never considered white. Ironic that so many Poles are fucking neo-Nazis now, but you know, that's besides the point. Let's not get into that. Whiteness as a concept is, is ever expanding. The only people that will never be white, no matter what, are black people. Partially because whiteness as a concept comes from the exclusion of blackness or how far removed you are from being black as evidenced by the one drop rule, as evidenced by the fact that we don't think Obama is a white person, we think Obama is a black person, even though he's half black. Whenever people have uh, theorized about whiteness or race as a social construct, this is precisely what they're talking about. When they say abolish whiteness, this is what they're talking about. It doesn't mean murder white people, but this is precisely what white nationalists believe. White nationalists believe in that outdated form of uh, racial purity, which is precisely why they say white genocide is occurring. Because they think miscegenation causes the eradication of the white race. Think about that for a second. White genocide is caused by non-white people having consensual sex with white people. And white people uh, as a concept has grown throughout time too. So it's like people that uh, you would never consider white are now considered white. This is why I make fun of white genocide all the time on the show. But most people don't realize it. And most people don't understand it. Like it's not a real concept. It's like a unicorn. It's a made up idea. Because if you believe that like people having people being in like loving marriages or having loving relationships with one another and having children together is eradicating your race in a systemic and targeted capacity similar to a genocide, then that's not a real genocide. You're just a fucking psychopathic racist. And Tucker Carlson is one. Don't get caught up in the spicy language when people talk about abolishing the white race. They're simply referencing whiteness as a concept that is ever expanding. Yeah, I love that Tucker Carlson is like, criticizing scientific racism when, uh, you know, he he had Charles Murray on. Oh, we have data on fairly large numbers of registered nurses, black and white. And the difference in mean IQ between the two of those is a dozen IQ points, which is a lot. Wow, that's really crazy that uh, Tucker Carlson doesn't seem to have a problem with race realism and race science here, considering Charles Murray is literally one of the fathers of like modern modern race realism with his bell theory or bell curve uh, theory about, uh, you know, the the uh, IQ mean amongst like different races. And he is literally advocating for it here uh, on his show. So that's that's kind of cool that uh, Tucker Carlson doesn't seem to have a problem with race science here. Abolish white race is such terrible optics, though. Yeah, well, that's why it's in fucking Harvard, okay? It's in, like, academia. It's in academic papers talking about social sciences and race as a construct and not in fucking Twitch chat, okay? There's a little bit more than, like, saying abolish whiteness, especially when you're talking about it as, like, a fucking social construct. God damn, this, like, optic shit is understandable in certain ways. Uh, it it's understandable in certain ways, but it's so fucking stupid when you when you have that argument about, like, academia. Sorry, sweaty. I really want you to, you know, think about the optics so that, like, one day some psychopathic reactionary could use this against you. I say this when it comes to certain lectures. Like, the optics argument in certain lectures makes sense. Uh, if you're doing a lecture in West Point, then that's absolutely going to be weaponized against you. So in certain instances, optics can matter. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. What matters is the source material. 
when it comes to like academic papers and shit, like, yeah, the, the optics of the argument is so stupid, especially if you are a free speech defender, which most of these people are considering your uh, framework from how the opposition will bastardize it. And uh, I don't know, devalue your own point of view or, on, or your own theoretical framework is like literally unironically anti-free speech in that way. Remember when fucking Sam Harris had this guy on and like went out to bat for him? That was pretty cool. Big time liberal, by the way. I love, I love the big time liberal Sam Harris unironically having Charles Murray on his show and then defending that decision. Immediate self-report for anyone is just like, like taking IQ is a serious measure for anything. Double self-report if you tie IQ to genetics, which he does regularly. This is his bread and butter. You don't think Asian people are smarter than white people? You can acknowledge differences between races and still believe in equality? No, I don't believe Asian people are smarter than white people, you fucking moron. What? Dude, that's so funny. Dude, no, no, that's not a real thing, okay? I don't think that there is one race of people that's smarter than another race of people. If IQ was a well-defining metric and you could absolutely consider it, uh, if, you, if you absolutely could like look at genes then uh, no such studies would exist on uh, like uh, IQ tests uh, done on people in India over the course of like uh, uh, a, a drought season and subsequent famine versus like uh, non-drought and, and uh, better material conditions on the same exact people where IQ points uh, uh, differentiate by like all the way up to 12%. It's, it's or not 12%, by 12 points. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a valid measure for, uh, it's not an accurate measure for anything. But beyond that, it's certainly idiotic to tie it back to genetics when so many environmental factors stand in the way. So yeah, race, uh, Tucker hates race realism unless he's like literally having the, the father of like, contemporary race realism on his other show. Take this guy, for example. His name is Eric Michael Dyson. He's a tenured professor at some stupid college or other. He lives in a rich, almost exclusively white neighborhood. He goes on television a lot. I love when people say this, when it's like, I can't believe this black person is like living in an exclu uh, all, nearly exclusively white neighborhood. It's like, yeah, that's kind of the point, dude. How is that any different than being like, why aren't there that many black billionaires? Why aren't there that many successful black people? Let's not examine the socioeconomic conditions that we subjected black people to on the virtue of their, uh, of their race. And instead, just keep asking that question and let it hang there as though there's something inherently like wrong or bad about uh, blackness. And that uh, there are some intrinsic qualities that we simply cannot say because it's too, it's, it's just a scary truth that no one wants you to discuss. No, it's just incorrect. It's literally external factors, you fucking moron. I wonder why there aren't that many black people in the probably nice neighborhood that he lives in. Hmm. Let's think for a moment. But no, because the entire purpose of this fucking broadcast from Tucker Carlson is to make you not think about those reasons. Okay? There are either internal or external reasons for why black people demonstrate like a larger percentage of, of uh, poor people in American statistics. There has to be a reason. It's either intrinsic or extrinsic. Which are the factors? If you believe that it's external, okay? If you believe that there are outside factors, you believe in systemic racism. You believe in the structural inequality that black people were subjected to. If you believe in the intrinsic inter internal factors, then you're fucking racist. It's that simple. You believe that like they're, uh, they have a genetic predisposition to poverty. It's that simple. It's not that hard. So what I'm trying to point out here is that like this concept of, of racial inequality is a lot more simple than the way that like people like Tucker Carlson try to make it out to be. Obviously, there's more nuance to it. There's more context to it. And, and uh, there's you can have that conversation in academia, as many do, right? And then Tucker will then bastardize that stuff and make it seem like people are just trying to generate white. They're just trying to make white people out to be the villains or whatever, like all white people. And speaking about, you know, the maggots, I I'm sorry, the MAGA, um, that is so corrosive in this you know, political... Uh -huh. Tucker Carlson is upset that Eric Dyson, who is a fucking... who has gotten way shittier throughout the years and became, like, such a fucking annoying lib. Tucker Carlson getting mad at that guy calling MAGA people maggots is, of course, hilarious considering Tucker has routinely considered immigrants coming into this country, economic migrants and refugees in general and asylum seekers in general, to be dirty and has done propaganda around that, like, regularly, but, you know... Uh, to see mediocre mealy-mouthed 
uh, snowflake white men who are incapable of taking critique, who are willing to dole out infamous repudiations of the humanity of the other, and yet they call us snowflakes, and they are the biggest flakes of snow to hit the earth. They are incapable of criticism. They are incapable of tolerating difference. They're scared of, oh, my God, critical race theory is going to kill your mother. And they don't even know. They're not critical. <laughs> they have no race, and they don't understand theory. White men, they're the problem. You hear that so often. I mean, he's actually saying that conservative men across the board are fragile as fuck. And there is truth to that, considering you're behaving that way right now. It used to be only a few years ago that the one thing you couldn't do in America was attack people in public on the basis of their race. I don't like that group because of their skin color. Let's hurt them. But he didn't even say, like, white people. He said MAGA people, like conservative people. He's talking about, like, whiteness as a white fragility, but he literally started off with, like, MAGA people. You know, unless you jump the gun and go, oh, uh, when you uh, when you mean MAGA people, you mean all white people, then, you know, that's uh, a bit of a self-report, I guess. But uh, I don't think the the Trump supporters represent, uh, it, you know, every white person. It's kind of stupid. If we could define what CRT is, that would help a lot with the problem. Okay, but that's the, the reason why it, it is undefinable is also because it's purposely undefinable. As the guy who, like, is the main reason why we talk about CRT all the fucking time from the Manhattan Institute, uh, openly admitted, which is, like, everything and anything is CRT. It's not like the actual uh, legal analysis uh, from a racial framework in our uh, in, in our criminal justice system. It's uh, it, it's just any time li like uh, systemic racism is mentioned, then it's CRT. That's the whole point. It's something to just like use as a catch-all term. I say this all the time, by the way. When people are criticizing white fragility, there is no reason to take ownership of that. If it does not pertain to you, just like I, as a white passing or white person, never uh, feel as though like white fragility criticisms extend to someone like myself because I don't feel it. So you are taking on that criticism on your own and saying, oh no, actually he's talking about me. And then unironically, you know, feeding into the meme of white fragility by being overly fragile about something that is not even about you. You're engaging in a self-report when you're like, oh, he's talking about me and now I'm upset. He's not talking about you, dude. And by the way, people do that sometimes, and I get fucking mad when people are like, no, actually, as a white person, like, as a white, you are also a part of this, and uh, you, as a white, have no say in this circumstance, like, in this conversation, like, see yourself out of it. And it's like, no, I will not see myself out of it. It's ridiculous. How many times have I fucking uh, criticized this shit? I don't like that group because of their skin color. Let's hurt them. You couldn't say that. Well, that's interesting because he, he didn't say that, but okay. Thing, and for very good reason. But of course, to someone with privilege, equality feels like oppression. You know, famous critical race theorist uh, MLK said that, you know, he, he but he's of course good because he said he has a dream that, uh, you know, uh, white people and black people should not be judged by uh, the color of their skin, but the content of their character, you know, for me, uh, just so he said that. So let's avoid everything else that he said. The irony is what Tucker Carlson is doing here. When he bastardizes what like uh, uh, Michael Eric Dyson is saying is exactly at the heart of the when you're when you have privilege, equality feels like oppression. Because if he turned around and said like um, you could never uh, you could never separate people on the virtue of race, uh, and then and then actually like directly analogize what what uh, Michael Eric Dyson was saying, he had to turn around and be like, what Michael Eric Dyson is saying is just like saying you should kill all black people. That's not what he said. So if you consider the mere mention of white fragility to be akin to saying kill all black people, then you're literally proving his fucking point about white fragility. That was what I was going to say. When their kids come home with, from school with assignments to suggest that all races are not in fact equal, that some races are guilty and some are innocent, that some groups are oppressors inherently and others are inherently oppressed. In the universities, this is called critical race theory. So that's the term that- I get so upset about this like uh this rhetoric are there people who fucking unironically believe that sure there are it's not the fucking dominant position okay and it's certainly not what people are fucking teaching and it's not even what critical race theory is supposed to be he's 100 correct and chat doesn't like hearing truths get rolled what, what are the truths that white people are inherently oppressive is that what you're saying the problem is 
motherfucker plays fast and loose with historically and inherently, as, cha as the chatter also pointed out. No one is saying white people are genetically uh, dominant or inherently dominant and have to be dominant. And that's why they're doing uh, racist things. They're saying historically, white people have dominated. And the impact of that, which by the way, everyone will agree to that throughout history, uh, only select few like Tucker Carlson will turn around and act like that's not fucking true. There's nothing inherent about it. There's nothing genetic about that. And it can change. And the first step towards changing that, especially because that system of domination is so pervasive that it still has a lasting impact on contemporary existence. But changing that system comes from learning about the history so that everyone can at least recognize it. What's happening in our schools and our military and our government is both simpler and easier to recognize than that. It's not critical race theory. It's racism, not neo-racism or reverse racism. Those are meaningless terms. It is race hate. This is so fucking stupid. A critical analysis from a racial point of view and, and racial oppression throughout history is not creating racism. It is literally to stop more racist fucking people from existing. If adequately representing history makes you feel like there's going to be is going to breed more fucking resentment towards white people, then now I understand why you don't want people to adequately understand history because you don't want people to recognize what white people have done. But the reality is like it's not supposed to create resentment. What it's supposed to do is create less resentment from white people towards black people so that we can understand our shared history and conflict and struggle throughout time so that we can make the future better. But of course, the reason why Tucker Carlson does not want people to be informed about America's racist history or the world's racist history is because he wants to act like it no longer is important that that was in the past and don't learn too much about it lest you start feeling differently uh, about uh, the reason why black people are uh, still subjected to the conditions that they're subjected to because it would shatter the worldview of so many people. Mark Milley is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He didn't get that job because he's brilliant or because he's brave or because the people who know him respect him. He is not and they definitely don't. Milley got the job because he is obsequious. He knows who to suck up to and he's more than happy to do it. Here's Milley yesterday, the man in charge of this nation's weapon, explaining that he's working to understand a concept called white rage. I do think it's important, actually. Uh, for those of us in uniform to be open-minded and be widely read. And the United States Military Academy is a university, and it is important that we train and we understand. Uh, and I, I want to understand white rage, and I'm white, and I want to understand it. So what is it that caused thousands of people to assault this building and try to overturn the Constitution of the United States of America? What caused that? I want to find that out. I want to maintain an open mind here, and I do want to analyze it. Kind of funny, like, how quickly Tucker shits on veterans and the military. Remember, Tammy uh, uh, Duckworth, like, got absolutely, like, Tucker Carlson literally straight up said, like, her disability was faked, pretty much. Or, like, that she was incapable. He does this shit all the time. He's able to do that. He, he's able to do that because he's a conservative. Conservatives love the military. Hard to believe that man wears a uniform. He's that unimpressive. Notice he never defined white rage, and we should know what it is. What is white rage? Well, like drapedomania, it's one of those diseases that only affect people with certain melanin levels. It's literally not, dude. It's not a fucking race realist medical condition. Why the fuck is Tucker Carlson making it seem like people are treating uh, white rage as though it's like anything beyond a social term created by those who like are, are studying social sciences? Oh my fucking God. Unironically, Tucker needs some critical race theory, I guess, to understand. I, if I, a brown lefty Muslim immigrant, had opened my MSNBC show last Sunday by calling America's top general a pig and stupid, saying he wasn't fit to wear the uniform, comparing America to Rwanda, the right would be demanding I be fired and calling me a traitor. But Tucker, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's 100% true. I've read Mao Zedong. I've read Karl Marx. I've read Lenin. That doesn't make me a communist. So what is wrong with understanding, having some situational understanding about the country for which we are here to defend? And I personally find it offensive that we are accusing the United States military, our general officers, our commissioned, non-commissioned officers of being, quote, woke. <laughs> He's not just a pig, he's stupid. So Mark Milley reads Mao to understand Maoism. He reads communists to understand communism. But it's interesting that he doesn't read white supremacists to understand white supremacy. 
Why not go to the source? Well, because Mark Milley would be fired instantly if he read those books, and getting fired is the one thing he doesn't want. Yo. For the record, this is why I think it's so fucking stupid whenever uh, centrists and neoliberals liken communism as an economic organization or Marxism as, a, uh, as an economic theory to Nazism and fascism, which is built upon racial boundaries, racial resentment. There is a completely separate designation for it, considering that it's not grounded within dialectical materialism at all. This is why Tucker Carlson can get away with saying such fucking laughable and idiotic things. Tucker Carlson hilariously is saying like, you know, you'd get fired if you read Mein Kampf. You know, maybe you should read Mein Kampf. Uh, cool, okay. And by the way, since it's a medical condition, at what age can you catch white rage, by the way? It's not. No one has said that white rage is a medical condition. Absolutely zero people are saying that white rage is a medical condition, except for Tucker Carlson. And now the fucking morons that listen to Tucker Carlson. White rage is not a medical condition. No one has said this. But the reason why Tucker Carlson has to say this over and over again is because he's building a fucking faulty premise here and making a faulty analogy. Tucker Carlson might have a medical condition, but I don't think it's white rage as a medical condition. He certainly is demonstrating some white fragility and white rage, though. Thanks, Mark Milley. We appreciate your contribution to our generation's scientific racism. By the way, have you read anything recently about winning wars? Apparently not. I, by the way, he's not even wrong about that. So it's kind of funny that conservatives now unironically keep saying that, like, America's military keeps losing wars. It's fucking true. But also, like, it's kind of funny that, like, Matt Gates said this exact same thing too. Like he was like, maybe that's why. Maybe because they're reading critical race theory that our fucking military keeps losing wars, bro. I mean, they're not wrong, but I also find it really weird that these like esteemed patriots keep fucking saying like the military's full of L nerds. That's great. I mean, welcome. Welcome to the resistance, Tucker Carlson. <laughs> By the way, the American military loses wars on purpose. It's because it's significantly more profitable that way. They don't give a fuck how many people die in the process, as long as the military industrial complex is, you know, getting their uh, gears oiled and uh, making more money. So in that sense, they are winning from a capitalist point of view. Ironically, Tucker would know more about this if he read Lenin. But I guess reading Lenin doesn't stop you from being an imperialist warmonger, as uh, General Milley and his existence also points out. You know, just... Remember that, theory nerds. We become Rwanda. What should we be teaching Wait, our children so that <laughs> it's too late? How do we save this country before we become Rwanda? Rwanda is Rwanda, not because of like uh, foreign policy of other nations, imperialism, anything like that, but because they read too much critical race theory. I love this, dude. What an incredible, what an incredible, insightful analysis from Tucker Carlson.